This one-of-a-kind tubular daylighting device combines natural light with LEDs for ultra-efficient lighting day and night. The best part is it only takes a few hours to install. This video will show you how. My name is Todd Anderson. I'm a product specialist and certified installation instructor at Solotube International. The Solotube Smart LED system is a unique hybrid unit that combines daylighting with LEDs. The daylighting portion of the system uses breakthrough optics to capture, transfer, and deliver daylight into the home's interior. The LED portion provides energy efficient electric lighting at night or when daylight levels are low. Here's how it works. The Solotube Smart LED system features a rooftop dome with patented Raybender 3000 technology, an advanced lens system that captures sun from all angles while rejecting overpowering midday summer sun. Then, Solotube Spectrolite Infinity tubing featuring the highest reflectivity on Earth transfers the light up to 40 feet, where it is beautifully dispersed throughout the home's interior with our Solotube decorative fixtures that combine the beauty of glass and the vibrancy of daylight. As daylight wanes, the LEDs automatically trigger to provide light to the space. This hallway is currently lit by two aging incandescent light fixtures and is often quite dim. The goal of this upgrade is to provide the homeowner with energy efficient lighting that will illuminate the entire length of the hallway day and night. Let's get to work. To install a Solotube Smart LED system, please refer to the printed installation instructions for a comprehensive tool list. For this installation, the first step is to remove the old electric fixtures. Determine the location for the new fixture by measuring the length and the width of the hallway. If installing one unit, identify a central location. If installing two, identify locations at either end of the hallway, but not more than 15 feet apart. You'll then tap the nails into the ceiling to mark the locations, or, in many situations, you can use the existing light fixture openings for location reference. Enter the attic to ensure the nails or existing openings are centered between the joists. If not, adjust the positions. Once the nails are properly positioned, mark the roof directly above them. Returning to the hallway, use a circle scribe or circle cutter to etch a 14 and 3 quarter inch diameter circle into the ceiling at both locations. Cut out the circles you just drew using a keyhole saw, then remove the ceiling material. Now it's time to go up to the roof. The best location is usually on the south facing slope. Once on the roof, locate the nail you placed previously. Position the flashing over the nail and trace a circle with a lumber crayon using the inside of the flashing base as a guide. Cut into the roof one half inch outside the traced line using a reciprocating or saber saw. Holding onto the nail, be careful not to let the cut roofing material fall into the attic to prevent damage to the ceiling. Use a flat bar to loosen the roof shingles around the opening and remove any roofing nails or staples that may interfere with the installation. Insert flashing without sealant to ensure a proper fit under the shingles. Remove the flashing and apply sealant to the underside. Then, slide the flashing underneath the loose shingles. Do not smear the sealant when inserting the flashing into the shingles. Secure the flashing to the roof using eight flashing screws. Insert the top assembly into the flashing. Using your hand, rotate the tube until the tube angle aligns with the ceiling opening below. Measure the distance from the ceiling opening to the top tube to determine the length of the connecting extension tubes. Once the desired angle is set, remove the top assembly and secure the tube angle by taping the tube seam with foil tape. Reinsert the top assembly into the flashing. Fasten the dome ring using four dome ring screws. Remove the protective liner from the tube interior. Using a standard or digital compass, determine which direction is south. Attach the light tracker reflector to the fastening clips located inside the dome and remove the protective liner. Rotate the dome so that the light tracker reflector faces south, then snap it into place on top of the dome ring. If you're installing in the southern hemisphere, face the light tracker reflector to the north. Apply sealant over the screws to prevent rusting and on the underside of the shingles that were pried up earlier to re-secure them to the roof. Lastly, trim the shingles on either side of the dome at a downward angle. This allows water to flow down the roof and prevents pooling. Follow the previous steps for the secondary unit. Using the recorded measurement, determine the required length of the extension tubing and assemble. Remove the protective liner from the tube interior. Create a tapered tube with one end larger than the other. Assemble the extension tube by securing the notches in the middle and at both ends. Apply foil tape along the seam and press firmly to complete the seal. Remove the protective liner from the bottom tube assembly. Then insert the small end of the extension tube into the bottom assembly with the vertical seam on opposing sides. Insert three evenly spaced screws to secure the tubing. Tape the connecting seam and apply pressure for a complete seal. Attach the expansion joint seal one quarter inch below the top end of the extension tube assembly. Repeat these steps for the secondary unit. 
Now, you'll insert the bottom tube assembly for the primary unit through the sealing entry and into the top tube. In this case, you will not tape the seam. Using a screwdriver or screw gun, engage the fastening clamps so they secure the sealing ring to the ceiling. If you are installing in cold weather climates, apply a latex caulking to the ceiling ring to help minimize air transfer. Repeat these steps for the secondary unit. Push the effect lens into the ceiling ring. Insert the diffuser into the ceiling ring over the effect lens and twist in a clockwise direction until it locks into place. Repeat these steps for the secondary unit. If you're installing an occupancy sensor, first determine where to place it. The ideal location is in a ceiling area that provides a full view of the space with an unobstructed path to the entranceway, but out of view from adjacent room traffic. The sensor should be positioned about 6 feet away from any air ducts to prevent false triggering. Using a 13 16 inch paddle bit, drill a small hole into the ceiling. Run the sensor cable into the attic through the ceiling. Insert the occupancy sensor so that it sits flush into the ceiling. For the next step, you'll return to the attic and install the junction box. For your safety, only qualified electricians should perform the wiring on the junction box. A qualified electrician should complete the wiring according to the installation instructions included with the Smart LED system. Then, fasten the junction box mounting bracket to a structural member. Place the chimney over the junction box and use the junction box screws to fasten it in place. Now connect the cords for the DC connector, the secondary unit, and the occupancy sensor to the primary unit. Refer to the installation instructions for connection information. Now that the installation is complete, the entire length of the hallway is brightly illuminated with natural light. During low light hours at dawn, dusk, and at night, the LEDs will turn on automatically to ensure the homeowner always has adequate light. Since we connected a secondary unit to the primary one, the LEDs will operate at the same time for synchronized lighting. So in about two hours, we transformed a dim hallway into a brightly lit, energy efficient space that automatically provides the homeowner with the desired amount of light day and night. For additional assistance with installation, visit the technical resources page at www.solatube.com or call 1-888-SOLATUBE to speak to a Solatube customer care representative.